Not the day. Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm just bringing you a um, RX 580. Yep, it's been a while. Um, I don't know how long it's been. I uh, made a video about this graphics card. It was a Sapphire uh, card. It was maybe four or five years ago. Uh, that I did, uh, or probably longer than that, uh, but I have not revisited this card like um, as far as performance wise. And the reason mostly is because it's been this card here has been really busy, not this one in particular, but this these models have been real busy in the uh, crypto mining world. So it's been a little difficult to get one, you know, for a reasonable price out in the wild, and that it is still. Um, with some life left in it, you know what I mean? So I finally got my hands on one um, and we're gonna tear it apart, do some TLC on it and then take it for a spin to see how it is doing in 2024. Stick around. All right, let's go ahead and take this thing apart just to see how everything is looking under the hood. Um, it's never been opened. As you can see there, so still got the warranty sticker on there. This thing will focus. There we go. All right, so yeah, let's do that real quick. So from the time that this thing was released, many, many, many years ago, probably uh, this one here, um, it's probably never been maintenance meaning that thermal paste thermal pads who knows how they're doing under there but we're gonna take a look and find out ourselves probably not gonna be looking very good okay so here we go oh boy okay Got to take this apart, but um, Asus is not very friendly when it comes to these cables here. And pulling these things out, as you see here, pulling these things out by the cables, it's like a death sentence. So I am really, oh man. Ah, oof. That feels like it hurts doing that. Um, let me try something else. I really, and I, this probably will result in me breaking this connector. Oh man, I hate this. But I just don't see any other way. There's nowhere else to grab. Man, this thing is really in there. Holy cow. You know what? Wait a minute. There's an area here where I can put my flathead screwdriver in. Maybe this will work. I don't know. Come on, Aces. Why? Why? Man. Okay, it looks like it's giving way. There we go. Okay, finally. All right, well, let's look at the uh, heat sink. Um, well, the fence don't look, don't seem to be obstructed with the, um, with the dust or anything. Paste, um, let's see. I don't want to scratch the heat sink either, but you know what? The paste, surprisingly, it's, it's not dry, like, all right, I wonder what type of paste Asus was using here. All right. Well, that's a good thing. Whatever that is, it's survived for these many years because the card is not overheating. I'm just doing this because it's been a long time. So I feel like doing it.
And um, the in case you're wondering, like what type of pastes these, uh, like AMD, Nvidia, and board partners, what type of paste they use? Um, their OEM pastes are typically made by um, by a company a company called Dow Corning, um, and they make good products, like as far as like thermal paste and whatnot. But they don't. Yeah, if you if you look it up, if you Google it, you you'll see type of stuff that they make. Uh, but this is more for like, they make for like industry, like, you know, wholesale type of deal. Or I don't even know if that's the right word. But anyway, you can see that it's pretty clean now. A little bit scratched up, but that's okay. All right, let's put you aside and bring this bad boy into view. Um, I have no idea what the heck that is. Um, looks like it's rust actually. Yeah, it's a little bit of rust, but um, everything else looks okay. All right, let's clean this core up. And I want to clean this thoroughly. I want to get all that junk out of here. So this is why I'm using a toothbrush. All right. Okay, that looks pretty clean to me. What do you guys think? Yeah, nine. All right. Um, now, what I'm really curious about is the uh, the state of these thermal pads. Um, wow, look at this. And um, yeah, this is wow. This is a pretty thick thermal pad let's see let's take a look and see how big this is this is a three millimeter pad that's what I thought and the pad doesn't seem to be uh, in bats in a bad state either like as you guys can see it's still okay it's still like you can stretch it so it's a still still good I'm, I'm gonna use this pad the only thing is I'm going to modify how this is making contact here um, uh, I hate to have to do that because uh, you shouldn't have to like you know they, they should have a better a better um, I don't know a better way of controlling the heat here and these pads these blue pads that you see here they remind me of the cheap Chinese thermal pads that you get on AliExpress. So don't hold your breath. I wouldn't hold my breath if these things are good quality because it doesn't look like it. And look at that. Only half of the memory, like the top here is pretty well covered, as you can see there. But only half here, and even this one here is like nothing. <laughs> Oh man, and look at this one here. That also. So, okay, it's just, you guys are just funny, man. You guys crack me up. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of these pads. Um, I don't think that they're doing much in terms of, of um, cooling anyway. I mean, Look the anemic. Look at the anemic uh, way, like the system that they got in place here to cool the RAM. And uh, since this has a back plate, uh, by the way, the back plate does not have thermal pads, as you can see there. So I'm going to be utilizing the back plate um, to cool the uh, the VRAM. Um, I don't know if these DDR5 modules run hot or not, like if it's like a crucial thing that, you know, um, you have to keep this or you have to be aware of their temperature or whatnot. Um, but I just want to do that because temperature is the number one killer of ICs so and other electrical components. Um, Okay, we gotta remove these right here too.
And by now, I, we should be able to take off the back plate as well. So. All right. Let's see what this looks like. Um, yeah, these are not top quality uh, thermal pads. I wouldn't dare say that. Um, they are, it looks like these are 1.5. Yep, they're 1.5 millimeter pads. Okay, so we're going to stick with that. Let's get rid of this insult. Sorry. Did I bump into you guys? Sorry about that. Okay, let's remove this back plate. Oh, we got two screws here that we gotta remove. I'm gonna put these aside in a different place so I don't mix them up. Okay. And we always gotta be careful when we remove the back plate on these cards because they have this little LED connection here in the back and you just got to be careful with it okay there we go hopefully we didn't damage that um, I am happy that they're not using a plastic um, over the back of the back plate here that way we can just use thermal pads you know put this thing to your use so yeah we're gonna be doing that Okay, backside looks pretty dusty. Okay, let's get some new thermal pads on you. Uh, put you back in place, put you back together, I should say. And then we'll, uh, yeah, do some benchmarking. Okay, these, uh, these thermal pads here are made by Arctic. Um, they're okay, the only thing is that they're very hard. And um, due to the, like in this situation, yeah, this would be perfect for these for this situation here because the heat sink doesn't have to deal with the hardness. Um, it's got a different, you know, that horrible plate there. So and I'm just gonna put a piece there. There we go. And unfortunately, there isn't much that I can do um, in terms of like cooling the other chips because well we really don't have any options here the aces just didn't care in the back i am suspecting it'll probably be 2.5 millimeters that you need or three millimeters but we'll find out here soon find out soon enough here we go it looks better now for the vrm we got this one here and I'm gonna get a strip, a small strip for that area there. And compared to that other stuff, whatever that, whatever quality that is, um, this is a a badly needed upgrade in terms of um, thermal pads. That is. You know, I was thinking about since this we got a nickel plated. Uh, copper uh, heat sink here or copper plate um, um yeah contact plate there on the heat sink i was thinking about just uh doing some liquid metal cooling for this but um nah nah i'm gonna i got different uh, different plans for that okay now we cannot install this without the back plate so that's kind of like a mm, i just realized that I might have done this backwards but wait a minute there might be a way to do it without having to flip this because as soon as I go like this this pads are gonna fall off they're not very sticky so all right there we go and um, yeah it looks like <clears throat> three millimeter is the correct size okay um, Let's put this plate 
where it belongs. I wonder where they get their ideas like their R&D. You know, like, oh, we're just going to use this and we're going to create one heat sink that fits all. And if it doesn't fit on some cards, we'll, we'll figure something else out. Don't worry, we'll figure it out, guys. They won't notice anyway. And um, screw these on. All right, guys, so we finally got it all put together. Um, you know what? I thought I was going to modify this, um, meaning uh, replace this with a 2.5 millimeter pad and then add a copper shim on top and then... Um, some thermal putty on top of the copper shim so that it gets better contact here with the with the fins you know as the, th the thermal putty will go in between the fins and have a better contact there um but i'm gonna leave it like that it's been fine all these years so why mess with it and yeah we added a mx6 so give it a little bit of a tlc all right, and there we have it. The card is back together, as it should be. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of that blue stuff there, but you know what? I'm just gonna have to deal with it. And besides, none of my cards and none of my rigs are um, in a horizontal position anyway, so yeah. I really just got this card out of impulse, just just because I wanted to make a, a video about it and see how it's doing in 2024. Uh, that eight gigabyte frame buffer uh, makes this a very attractive little card uh, for those of you on a budget. Um, if you wanna get into PC gaming, I think this will be a good option, but we're going to find out here. So let's get into some benching. All right, got her in the tester system. Um, there is one thing, one disclaimer I want to put out there or I want to throw out there is that the 5600G that I'm using here, um, this one is on steroids. I um, It's boosting to 4.65 gigahertz and the RAM, because this thing has a different memory controller than the, five, than the other 5000 series CPUs by AMD that are not uh, APUs, uh, this memory controller can actually support memory up, you know, over 4,000 megahertz or mega transfers. Um, so this kit here is running at 4,000 mega transfers a second, uh, CL18 and tweaks sub timing. So um, for this card, it's a good setup. It's good enough. All right, let's get into some benchmarks. Okay, guys. Oh, so here we are in GTA 5, everyone's favorite. <laughs> um, we'll be testing at 1080p, of course, four times MSAA, very high settings, um, advanced graphics, there you go. All right, let's get into some benchmarking here, and let's reset. Okay, great. Let's go for a little drive. So far, we're at um, 53 averaging. Right. Looks like the fifty six the uh, fifty six hundred G is holding up pretty good. And you know what? Despite the fact, despite the fact that yeah, this is running at fifty three FPS average, um, the game is still playable. It looks great, actually. It actually looks great. You know what? Um, okay, so four times MS AA 53 FPS, right? But what if we lower that? Because really, do we really need to be there? Let's go with two times two. See if we get any, oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, okay. That's 10 extra FPS just by lowering that to 2 times MSA. And the game still looks 
fantastic. I mean, look at this. <laughs> yeah, okay, the game is, what, 13 years old? But the RX 580 is doing just fine. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I dig this. Yeah, I can definitely play this game um, with this card at these settings. No problem. I mean, look at this. I don't know about you guys, but this looks good to me. Yep, I dig this. Okay, let's try our next game. So we say 63 FPS um, averaging for GTA 5. Alright guys, so we're testing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 1080p. No scaling or anything like that. Graphics, I have it set to medium because it's an RX 580, so I can't really expect... I'm not going to expect much out of this little thing. All right. Let's get rid of this right panel here. All right, let's go for a horse ride around town. Toby, trading a needle for an arrow, I see. Eivor, can you teach me the art of archery? I'll be happy to. And as you can see, the yeah, the RX 580 is struggling a little bit here. But nevertheless, I don't know about you guys. Again, it is playable. I mean, the game is playable. I have no stutters, no hiccups, no you know the frame time is not suffering or anything like that. I do have, you know, a few spikes here and there, but nothing too significant. Yeah. So, okay. All right. 48, 48 FPS. <laughs> For you guys that are used to 144 hertz or whatever. Yeah, this, this is going to be like... A headache to to your eyes, or a pain to your eyes, I should say. But um, considering how old this card is, um, and the fact that it can still play games, this is a 2022 game, you no, know, 2022 game. Um, the very fact that it can, you can still play it, I mean, that says a lot. What's in here? I've never been in here. Especially on a horse. Okay, I don't care. Let's get out of here. Yeah, those guys are... They're training for war, man. They're getting ready for war. Let's go for a little run, shall we? Where are you going? Come back! No. How about that? Yeah, okay, you know what, you guys get the point. Um, the game is playable. Um, you probably want to set the, set the the graphics settings to low. Medium, well, you see it here for yourselves. Um, it's just, you can still play it, but if you're comfortable at 51 FPS, hey, yeah, you can, you can play the game. It's doable. All right, so, We'll say 51 FPS for 51 FPS for um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. All right, fellas. So now we're doing Crisis 3 Remastered. This is where they introduce they introduce um, RTX into this game. Um, 1080p. Uh, one time SMAA. Texture very high. Vsync. We're gonna turn that off. Yes system spec high 
Um, let's see, is there anything else? Sorry. And there you go. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull this up. Reset. There we go. Move. Very smooth so far. Dave, bandit. Make the diversion. Profit, let's go. Romeo Actual, this is Romeo 1. Initiating burnout. Over. Copy that, Romeo 1. We've got to get you in there, inside the dome. There's a war starting. The Alpha Seth? No. Remember those guys who shot you from the cape box in Siberia? The guys this to me looks very playable. How many uh, years? Pretty smooth. The guys who tore the nano suit from my Even flesh. though, the yes, guys we who are, are at the same to you. Sell 50. Those guys. Mm, 60 FPS. Oh, forget it. <laughs> it is still very playable. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, if you're looking at, if you look at the uh, frame time, uh, not that many high spikes. So it's pretty smooth gaming so far. It's not very demanding. Also, like the game, it's not very demanding on like uh, VRAM or system RAM, as you can see. Now here we're gonna get a boost in FPS because that out there is uh, pretty. Uh, graphically demanding, so yeah. Silencer on. Okay, let's turn on the silencer, like we always do. We're walking straight through the front door. But as you guys can see, it's surprise is going to be our only chance. Nice looking. I mean, no one's e crazy enough to this ago. Reflections. Everything looks good. Let's do this quietly. We've got QRF teams on standby. Uh, let's take this dude out. Quietly. There. And yes, sir, we'll take that. No, we don't need that. Oh, wait a minute. We can put a silencer on it. They All pulled right. everyone off leave for this guy. You hear that? That was easy. Actual, this is 5 2. Perimeter breach in sector 2, Alpha 0. We got two looking for hostiles. Sit back up ASAP. Over. Shit. Reinforcements. <laughs> wow, okay. So, not bad. Okay, high settings, um, crisis 3, 1080p, not bad, not bad at all. And I don't know how long you guys been uh, playing video games like on the PC, but remember that saying from back in the days, but can it play crisis? Um, yes, sir. It can. It definitely can. That was a bit. Let's skip through this. Don't care Let's about go. that. I mean, look at this. High specs. Romeo one. We breached Foxtrot four. On a Burnout RX five eighty. Over. <laughs> and the game looks fantastic, man. Look at this. It looks fantastic. This is very playable. Where's this other guy? What's going on here? Nothing. Nothing to see here. Man, how the heck did I miss that? No, don't need that, thank you. What? Give him
Oh, man. Well, all right. I think we'll leave it here, guys. Um, so, 60 FPS for Crisis 6. Oh, <laughs> Crisis 6. Crisis 3 at high settings, 1080p. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, fellas. So, it's time for Far Cry 6. 1080p. No type of uh, upscaling or anything like that. Quality will um, set it to medium because, yeah, that's what's reasonable. Advanced settings, blah blah blah. All right. So let's go ahead and continue the game. I'm at the depot. Libertad needs that fuel. So taking that depot isn't just about dealing with the army. It also means securing that gasoline. You have to be smart, Danny. Find some high ground and use your phone to scout out cameras and alarms. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Okay, well, so far 59 FPS is what I'm getting here. Why don't you guys die? Jeez. Yeah, so we're um, we're doing okay. 55, 59 FPS. Oh, get some, get some. The booty. Okay, whatever. So, 60 FPS. Looking good, looking good. Oh man, I ranked up. Cool. Let's go for a horse ride, man. No, get out of here. No. Go. Let's go. Don't worry, I'm a friend. Yep, so I don't know about you guys, but this looks Easy. very playable to me. Um, Let's go. Yeah, we are at we're at medium settings, but still, remember it's a RX 580. I keep reminding you. So um, this is a seven-year-old graphics card. What? Vamos, vamos. Sucker. So Far Cry 6 is totally doable, I would say, uh, on an RX 580, if you're willing to um, lower your graphics settings a little bit. Um, if you look at the uh, system memory, yeah, it is taxing on your system memory. So that's why I say 32 gigabytes will be the minimum, you know, for today's games. And this is at 1080p. Um, as far as like the frame buffer on the card, uh, it's only four gigabytes. On. So yeah. I bet this place has a stash room. Very playable. Alright, so we'll call it 60 FPS on uh, Far Cry 6, medium settings. 
All right, fellas, so now we're doing Cyberpunk. Now, this game is very demanding on your graphics, so... Yeah, just wanted to throw that out there. Um, we're gonna do medium settings. Even this is probably going to be... Uh, yeah. Uh, we're gonna turn any scaling off. Um, yeah, okay. So, apply. 1080p. Full screen. And let's see, anything else? No, no, okay. Let's get into the game. Alright, so here we are in the game. Let's go ahead and reset this here. Let's go for a little drive. So we're at 1080p medium settings. We're playing it on an RX 580. Playing Cyberpunk. Yeah, not the max settings, but still. Okay, we really made this guy. Okay. Hey, look at our frame time. Man, pretty smooth. Spikes of any kind. Yeah, we're at 40 FPS or 39 FPS average, but I don't know, man. This looks playable to me. I don't know about you. 10 gigabytes on my system RAM, but I'm sure the game is loving that juicy 4,000 mega transfers a second. Hiccups, no lag spikes, no stutters, nothing. Look at this. RX 580 for the win. 40 FPS. What's going on here? It's alright, guys. I'm friendly. I'm friendly. No. Alright, so let's do God of War. Let's see what we can do here. We'll set the graphics to original. 1080p. No um, scaling or anything like that. Let's get, let's get right into the game. Okay, let's reset this. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> 66 FPS on God of War. Original settings, of course. Not bad at all. Man, look at this. Nice. All right. Let's do some fighting. Though. Let's go to the second arena. Wow. Look at what's happening here. I don't know, man. Let's just go for... You know what? Um, no. Let's go down here. Betray us here. Man, this is totally doable. Let's do it. I'm ready. Daughter, let's go! 
<laughs> Whatever, dude. Think we can beat him? <laughs> or do we need better gear? All right, man. But no, I am. I am pretty impressed. Man, look at that. 60 FPS. An RX 580. Playing God of War. Original settings. Very nice, man. I'm very happy. This, yeah. I have to say that. Um, I was not expecting this. Like, yeah. I mean, everything looks good. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, it looks good to me. So, okay. So, we call it 60 FPS for God of War on the RX 580. Alright, so now let's do Horizon Zero Dawn. And, of course, 1080p. No type of scaling here. Um, yeah, let's make sure we get that right. Um, and that's it. Okay, let's go to graphics. No, we don't want we don't want ultimate. We'll leave it to we'll leave it on original. Okay. Give it a second here for this to kick in. Okay. Now let's get back to the game. All right. Let's go ahead and reset this here. So we're at original settings, 1080p. Let's go again for a little run. And even though, even though, yeah, it is at <laughs> 40 FPS, I still feel that the game is playable. Um, and yeah, it's a good thing that we have eight gigabytes of uh, frame buffer here because look at that. We're already at six, 6.2 gigs of VRAM and uh, 12 gigabytes of system memory. So yeah, this game loves memory, period. And we're cruising along at 43 FPS. Oh boy, this guy's going to get mad at me. No, you know what? I don't want to fight you. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Peace. And all this texture here. Yeah, it's... This is a good place to test. This little card. You know what? Let's go up there to see what, what's up there. Go through all this grass. Can I go in there? It looks closed. Can I? Oh man. Nah, they're not gonna let me in there. Why? Why can I go in there? Whatever. I don't wanna go in there anyway. Who cares? What? Sorry, ma'am, I think you're talking to the wrong person. Yeah, guys, um, original settings, 1080p. Um, but if you've noticed, yeah, even though the frame time, you see those those little spikes there. It's not um, like I don't see that translated into the game, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I don't see that materializing in the game like it's running smooth even though the FPS is low uh, it's uh, it's playable like I mean look at this totally doable uh, turkey oh no way wait get over here wait where's the turkey at where did the turkey go? What? <sighs> All right, whatever. Um. Yeah, so it looks like 45 FPS it is for Horizon Zero Dawn. Um. Everything looks good. Textures are not missing or anything like that. That's thanks to that frame buffer. Um. That has kept this card alive even till this day 
So, oh, my pouch is full. Okay, who's this guy? I have no idea who this guy is. Anyway, or what his purpose is, or what these guys are doing. <laughs> All right, anyway, yeah, fellas, so we're at 56 FPS average on the RX 580 on Horizon Zero Dawn. 